Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. So excited about what we're going to share on today. On yesterday via our television ministry, we started a new series entitled Lead Me to faith lead me to faith and I know that the title might indicate uh, leading me um, you know that my faith is strengthened but I am bringing it this in in the components of what our leadership does and so if you would like to get a, a fullness of part one of this I invite you to go over to our YouTube page and there you will find uh, part one, Lead Me to Faith. Amen. And we share it with you in the first components from uh, dealing with debt. Second Kings 4th chapter, 1st through the 7th verse. And today we're going to dive into... In the need of food, First Kings seventeen eight through fifteen, and so uh, the way that this came about is the Holy Spirit was dealing with me about it. Many are uh, coming to the sanctuary. I'm not going to say the church because we are the church. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, the the Holy Spirit began to say to me, "There is a need in the house." Now I did take it for where I fellowship here in New Jersey but as a whole there is a need in the house in the body of Christ many who have been coming to the sanctuaries many who have I'm not just talking about those who have just started to come I'm talking about those who have been coming for years and and they have reached a point in their lives and they are looking for some change and they're saying I keep hearing about Jesus and, and and I keep hearing the messages uh, but for where I am right now I need something more and what I need uh, I, I, I need I need more and he's saying that there is a need in the house now I'm looking at this on the leadership part <laughs> I love our leaders and we always keep prayer and I was led over to certain passages of scripture dealing with leadership and how uh, God will direct a leader to lead you to faith to lead you to what God wants to do in your life and it comes with instructions it comes with faith it comes with being obedient and so this is a three-part series. Like I said yesterday, we dealt with debt. And uh, that is coming from 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, where the mother had a debt to pay. And she went to her spiritual leader because her husband, uh, who had passed away, uh, was one of the sons of the prophets. And so they went to leadership she went to leadership concerning a debt that she had and the creditor wanted to utilize their sons as slaves to pay off the debt and going to the leader the leader heard from God giving her some instructions first of all asking her what would you have me to do what do you have and using what she had and giving her some instructions by her faith and obedience, she followed the instructions of the man of God. And when she did what he told her to do, she went back to her leader to say, okay, I did what you told me to do, now what? And he gave her further instructions. And so this particular series is looking at both sides. It's looking at the shepherd and it's looking at the sheep. And we are to seek godly counsel. And so uh, yesterday I, I 
distinctively heard in my spirit you know many are saying uh I, I i've heard about jesus i keep hearing about jesus i keep hearing the messages I keep, here, I keep coming to Sunday morning services. I, I show up for Sunday morning service. I, I show up for Bible study. I show up when there was a revival. I show up, I show up, I show up. But I'm not seeing any changes in my life. And so through this right here, uh, we're, we're going to take our focus on what the leader does what the leadership does and what the responsibility of the sheep have because the sheep are to look to their leader the leader is the spokesperson for God so today I want to deal with another area and that particular area is going to be food okay that area is going to be food. And so we're going to take a look at 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. And I'm going to start at the 8th verse. All right. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zephyrath, which belongeth to Zidon and, and dwell there behold I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain me so he arose and went to Zephyrath and when he came to the gate of the city behold the widow woman was there gathering of sticks and he called to her and said fetch me I pray thee a little water and a vessel that I may drink and as she was going to fetch it he called to her and said bring me I pray thee a morsel of bread in thine hand and as and she said as the Lord thy God liveth I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a and a little oil in a cruise and behold I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die so I wanted to read all of that but yet bring out some very important key points first of all elijah the prophet there is uh, going on at a time that there was a drought no rain due to the disobedience of the current king and up in the first portion of first kings the 17th chapter uh, god had him to go to a place and by a brook and he had the ravens to sustain him now that brook has dried up and he's saying I want you to go to another area and I have commanded a widow woman to sustain me now what is so pivotal important about this right here is he is about to send the prophet to a place where there was a great need and lack and but God had already said, I commanded her to sustain thee, which means assist thee, provide for thee, share what she has with you. Elijah asked for water at first when he comes into the gate and he sees the widow woman. Now she was able to share what she had access to. She didn't have a problem with water. She had a problem with the lack of food. And so when he asked for water, she had no trouble going to get the water. That was not the issue. The issue was food. And so after asking for water and she goes to get the water, once again, this is not her issue. This is food. And God has sent his servant, the prophet there, to meet the need. He already sent him to a place for him to be sustained, not knowing that this woman needed to be sustained herself. And it is when he asks for the bread that now the reason of his coming has been brought before him. Her need is what God is about to supply. 
verse 12 says and she said as a lord thy god liveth i have not a cake i have water i don't have cake as a matter of fact i'm about to take this very little that i have and put it together and cook it so that me and my son could eat and die she is a widow woman God sends a spiritual leader sometimes as we shared on yesterday um, that instance where the widow woman she went to the leader on this instance God is sending the leader to her but either way we're dealing with a leader someone who is going to give you godly counsel and which we need if you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I'm Pastor Angel Ferguson, and we are in a new series, Lead Me to Faith, and we are looking at the components of the shepherd and the sheep. Where are we going for our godly counsel? Uh, we are all facing things in our lives, and sometimes we get to a point where uh, the needs are, are not being met. And what I mean about that is, is as the leader, as the shepherd, as the overseer, it is the duty of that overseer to inquire of the Lord concerning the people. What is it that they need spiritually? Where are they spiritually? And what is going on in their day-to-day -day life? And I'm not saying that to pry and be nosy. I'm saying that simply because we should know uh, if one of our parishioners is dealing with, um, you know, poverty, needing food, needing clothing, needing shelter, sick, strife, and not because somebody has come and give us some gossip. Uh, I'm not talking about a gossip section. I'm talking about when God reveals to you what is going on with the people and he releases a word through you for the people to meet that particular need and that word is going to come with some instructions that is what overseer is all about that's what being a shepherd is all about how is it that we have individuals that are sitting in our sanctuaries in our congregations that are battling depression and we don't know it or abuse and we don't know it and once again it's not because someone has gossip it is simply because we have failed yes i said we have failed i'll say it again we have failed to ask the lord to inquire what is it that the people need what what is the word that you would have me to deliver and give unto this people that will meet the need for where they are what is it what is it and I guarantee you I have no doubt that if you and I those who are leaders those who are spiritual leaders if we would take our time and ask guess what I know without a shadow of doubt that God will respond he will answer you if you ask he will answer if you seek he will reveal if you knock he will open it up but don't just seek to find out what's going on with the people so you have something to talk about and be nosy that's not what i'm saying here what i'm saying is is meeting the needs of the people how is it that we do not know that uh, someone is sitting in our congregations and they have an entrepreneur spirit they they need tools to to start a business to expand but they don't know where to go or someone who is so buried in debt um they're they're pinching pennies but yet we have such a hard task on them about their financial obligations well i'm in debt and i'm trying to keep a roof over my head i'm trying to keep food on the table I'm trying to keep clothes and 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 when you have a family um that is even more stressful and so but there are solutions but we must seek the counsel of the almighty god now that is the part on the leadership but when i go over to the sheep 
and those words are expressed and given however God may use the shepherd whether it is on one on one or a message across the podium however he may release that word to us the sheep then uh, scripture says that in the day that you hear my voice heart not your heart and so sometimes pride will make us push a word to the side because we don't want anybody to know that we're going through we want to paint the picture and make it look all beautiful and pull out the nice handbag and the, the, the nice clean press suits and 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 we want to look the part but yet the heart is in trouble the mind is in turmoil and everything around is in chaos and God is saying I have an answer for you if you seek me if you go into the secret place of the Most High, if you abide in the shadow of the Almighty and you begin to pour out your heart, your prayer, your supplication, listen, when you come together in the midst, where there are two or three are gathered in the midst, I will be there. When they come together in my name, I will be in the midst. And whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that you begin to seek me for, I will release it unto you, but don't reject it because I have a purpose and I have a plan to get you out of whatever it is that you are facing. Don't reject the word. And and something yesterday that was revealed that was just so very good and, and it was just good to my spirit. It was really, really sweet. The fact that uh, when, when Jesus said, behold, I give unto you power uh, I give unto you authority, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. It is more than about casting out demons and 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 teaching Bible study and and preaching a word on Sunday morning. You who have been given the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. You have been given authority to shepherd God's people, and so you have an authority from God to lead. But as the sheep, we have to give the leader permission to lead us. I'll say it again. We, you who have been placed in uh, an, uh, an authoritative position, uh, whether you are called overseer, apostle, bishop, pastor, elder, and you hold that position, you have been given the authority by God to shepherd his people. Now the sheep must give you permission to lead them. You have the authority to do it by God, but every individual has to give you the authority to allow you to lead them. And the way that that authority is issued is that they follow your instructions. That they hear what you are saying and they take heed to what you are saying and they receive it in their heart and they begin to act on it so let's get back to this awesome awesome word of teaching because listen i am the first partaker of this so here in in first kings the 17th chapter uh the woman is saying you know uh she didn't object when he asked for water she went to get the water that wasn't her issue her issue was lack of food and she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Verse 13 says, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Go and do it. Go and do what you said. You got the sticks, you got the oil, and you got a little meal. He says, but make me thereof a little cake first. Go ahead in the process of making the cake and bring it unto me and after make for thee and thy son. Verse 14 says, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth the rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she he and she and he and her house did eat many days. 
And so it's following the instructions that matters. We may not understand uh, why that level or that type of instruction is coming to us because I, I can only imagine she probably wanted to say, did you hear what I just said? Did you just hear me say, I, only, I, I have barely enough. I'm getting ready to make one cake and split it between me and my son and that's it. But she did according to what the man of God said. Remember, when God told Elijah to go into this area, he already said, I commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. So here's something else I want to bring out. Even though you might be at the last, this woman, she was at her last. It doesn't mean that she didn't have a desire to share with somebody else it doesn't mean that inwardly she wasn't saying oh if I had enough I would share it doesn't mean that she didn't say oh I have a desire to uh, to feed the poor even though she was going through something and when God gives us a desire in our heart to do something do you not know that the enemy will come and try to make it so hard for you to do? He will. If you have a desire to sow seed in different areas financially, the enemy will start attacking your finances so that you can't do what it is that you desire to do. That desire came from the Lord. But I command this day, that whatsoever God has given me a desire to do, I bind the hands of the enemy that will try to come and to stagnate it, that will try to abort what he has called me to do. I will accomplish that which he has sent me out to do. He spoke a word. He gave me some instructions. He put the desire in my heart. And I'm going to believe that he is going to provide everything that I need to fulfill that desire. The enemy comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. And so he will try to bring in uh, components of negativity and doubt. Like I said, he will attack what you desire to do if you desire to feed the poor and uh you know or you know what fix some meals for the elderly uh a, a new mother who just had you know conceived um if you desire to do stuff like that the enemy gonna attack that he don't want you to do that so he will cause you to become so busy that you can't get around to it mm -hmm. yep or you just don't have enough or let, let me tell you this, he will even cause some strife between you and the individual or the organization that you want to bless to divert you from doing what it is that he has called you to do. He's very cunnery, but he only has a job which is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy your faith. He wants to uh, kill what it is that you're supposed to do. He does not want you to fulfill the things of God. He does not want you to. But you and I must become intentional in following the instructions, the godly instructions released unto us through his servants. When we begin to follow the instructions of the servants of the most high God which are our spiritual leaders it will lead us out of debt it will lead us out of those times of uh, lack of food and poverty and when you just don't have enough and so I truly believe that when you have a leader who has the heart of Christ the instructions that they give you are for your benefit so that you may have a good and expected end God does not want his people to lack anything. He wants you to have enough. He wants you to have more than enough. He wants you to have abundance. He gave his son that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. 
But in the same tokens, we must be good stewards. That's right. We must be good stewards over what we have. So don't waste what you have. Mm -hmm. Don't waste it. Take good care of it. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I am so excited that we have uh, in stock, I'm so excited, we already have in stock uh, paid, uh, the book, the workbook for our upcoming class sounding the alarm through the prophetic we have written the content we have had the workbook published and we have them in stock preparing for this november the 21st 2022 class it is going to be virtually only six o'clock p.m so that november 21st is a monday it is for four weeks and we're going to cover things such as what is the prophet and the watchman? What do they do? What are their responsibilities? We're going to talk about authority. Uh, we're going to talk about different types of uh, spiritual anointings and authorities who were seers, who just heard the word and delivered. We're going to talk about those who dreamed. We're going to talk about those who had dual roles. Uh, such as uh, Ezra, who was a teacher and a prophet. Jeremiah was a pastor and a prophet. We're going to dive into all of that. So excited because not every prophet preaches. Oh, we're going to have a good time in this four-week course. It is $100 per person, which equals to $25 per week. It is four weeks only. Each registered participant will get a copy of the workbook mailed to you prior to class. Now, the workbook contains some reading material, reflect and review, some in-class discussion. And after each class, I will email the student a quiz on what we covered. So you're going to want to take notes. And at the end of the four weeks, I will email you a final exam for you to take. And when you return that final exam to me, I will then send you a certificate of completion for the course. How are we able to send you a certificate of completion? We are registered with the Florida Department of Education as a religious institution. I have placed on our Facebook page for the Balance of Life a promo video for this upcoming class as well as details on how you can contact us to get registered if you are interested in taking this class email us here at the balance of life our email address is the balance of life one at yahoo.com so excited uh, i have one shipment of workbooks already and i am waiting patiently for another shipment of workbooks to come in so excited all right so today we are discussing lead me to faith and i am just looking at this on the part of the uh the shepherd the overseer the one who has been placed uh to cover us spiritually uh they are god's representative to shepherd on earth we have a great shepherd, Jesus Christ, but he has dispatched, he gave some, oh God, come on, thank you, Holy Spirit, he gave some to fulfill a position of being a shepherd over his people here on earth, and we must seek godly counsel for the people, knowing how to shepherd the people. Many are sitting in congregations today and they are saying I don't see any change happening in my life can you imagine week after week month after month year after year 
individuals coming to a ministry and nothing has changed in their lives no spiritual maturity still in debt still in poverty still angry still hurt still broken still confused still abused but every week when there are scheduled services, they are there. Now, two things are happening. And I'm always going to look at the leadership because we have a responsibility to say, God, what is it that your people need? Because there is a need in the house. And the word of God is all about leading us to do better, to live better better a better i remember my father when he when he talk, begins to talk about the book of hebrews he's it's about better leading you to better and when that word is released from god when god has given that that shepherd that word it is up to the sheep to take that word in and to begin to follow the instructions that has been released so that we can come out of debt so that we're no longer living in poverty so that we are healed and made whole that we're no longer broken that we're no longer confused we're no longer angry we're no longer spiteful we're, we're no longer contentious we're no longer trying to cause division but oh my god what I am seeing it's week after week, month after month, year after year. And don't get me wrong. I know that the word of God says one plant, one water, but God give the increase. I know that that's what the word says, and I believe that wholeheartedly. But I believe that there are individuals in their own are saying, I come here week after week. And there is no change in my life. Jesus, what is going on? Jesus, what is going on? I keep hearing about a Jesus. I keep hearing about a word. I keep hearing about what he's going to do. What he did in the lives of the individuals that are in the scriptures. And I am looking for some change in my life. I believe somebody wants some change in their life. Somebody is saying, I am ready. I'm at the pinnacle. I'm at the point. I want change in my life. Somebody is crying out and saying, I want different. I want something more. Somebody is saying, I've been in this same cycle for a long time and I'm tired of this cycle. I'm tired of this. I want more. I want to see the manifestations of God in my life. Somebody is saying, come Lord, come Lord. Somebody is saying, I've, I've heard enough Sunday sermons. Somebody is ready to make a change. Somebody is ready to do something radical. And I'm saying to our leaders that we need to be ready. We need to be attentive to what the Spirit is saying to the church, what the Spirit is saying to the leader. Get ready for that word that is going to snatch an individual out of the stage that they are in because they are tired of that particular stage. Somebody is looking for some dynamic change, some di dynamic change. Somebody is looking for a shift. I can feel it. Somebody is ready. They're ready for a change. Somebody is saying, I surrender. Oh, I'm ready to surrender. I'm, I'm tired of, of this of this circle, of this cycle. I'm tired. Uh, somebody is, is at the point they are now uncomfortable in the state that they are in. They are getting so uncomfortable and they are looking 
for a change. And I want our leaders to be ready to hear what God is going to release unto you to say, I want you ready, I want you ready, I want you ready, my God. God is absolutely amazing. He is so good. And, and I truly believe that this right here is, is, is components to uh, sounding the alarm through the prophetic, uh, being attentive to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal what he hears from God, just like Jesus did. Jesus spoke what he heard the Father say. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit reveals what God wants us to know. He reveals the heart of God concerning you and I. And if we would pray and ask, God, what is it that you want me to do? What are your instructions for me? Lead and guide me. Seek him while he may be found. Give godly counsel. And when we receive that godly counsel, I pray that we become obedient to what has been given unto us. It's time for us to be obedient. In the instance that we gave on yesterday with television ministry, and let me go over there right quick, over in Second Second Kings, the fourth chapter, the prophet Elijah instructed the woman after he found out what she had, and she said, I have a pot of oil. He told her what to do with that pot of oil. He told her to go borrow some pots and don't just get a few, but a lot. And begin to pour the oil in the pots until all the oil is gone. She filled up all those pots. And then she went back and she said, well, I did what you told me to do. And then he said, go sell the pot and pay your debt. So there was a solution to what we are facing. There is a solution. But once the instructions are given, first we have to ask God, because every situation is different. Every circumstance is different. And so that's why it's so important, thank you, Holy Spirit, that it, when we're doing one-on-ones, uh, -on consultations, that's why the, 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 the shepherd, the leader, he prays for the people by individuality. It's, it's not we pray for them as a whole and then individual that's why it's good know the people name know the people's name one by one name by name and begin to ask God God what is it that they need give me that word will you reveal it to me give me that word give me the instructions for them And I believe that when you have uh, just a huge, huge congregation and you have a lot of people, there are several that are going through the same thing at different times. And so God might release a word and, and, and those that are dealing with that particular thing, it could be debt. That's why we see sometimes uh, where the, the, the man or woman who is ministering will say, how many of you are dealing with such and such? How many of you are dealing with this? How many are you dealing with that? So that they can address that particular thing. Now, if you want to know what to do beyond that, after you hear the word, make some appointments with your spiritual leaders. And, and we're just praying for the leaders that they are trustworthy, that whatever you discuss with them stays between you, that desk. <laughs> mm -hmm. Them and the Holy Spirit. That it is not used as gossip. That nobody need, don't nobody need to know that you went and sat down and talked to your leader unless you tell it about this or about that and that they pray with you and 
and give you a strategic plan according to the will of God for your circumstance to be praying with you. Now, let me say this. Uh, if you do not, if you choose, if we choose not to follow the instructions given unto us by our leaders, don't you go and say you're not getting what you need. Because you decided not to follow those instructions. Now let God be true and every man a liar. But if you are receiving good, good counsel from your ministry, from your overseer, from whatever, whatever their title, overseer, pastor, bishop, uh, elder, elder is an overseer, elder is a pastoral ship. And if you are getting what you need, good godly counsel, keeping peace in the home, concerning the children, concerning the finances, concerning your career your ministry gifts we are concerned about all of that at least we're supposed to be we're supposed to be concerned about all of that we are supposed to be concerned more than about your spiritual gifts you have gifts and talents is that something that god is going to develop into you in you so that you can start a business or uh, or, you know, is that ministry for you? Uh, what is it that is in you? Because you have gifts and talents in you. Now, what, 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 what is it that you're going to do with them? What is it that God wants you to do with what he's already given, given you? It's in you. We want you to be made whole. That is the common goal. That is our common goal. Listen, I'd love for you to go over and like and share. Become engaged in the Facebook page for The Balance of Life. We go in, we go in quite a bit every day and uh, put in words of encouragement. Keep you updated with what's going on with The Balance of Life with Angel Ferguson Ministries as a whole. You can also visit us on our website at www.angelferguson-ministries.com. Oh, and let me share this good news with you. So uh, last week, I believe we began to uh, talk about uh, plant to plant. And so we have been allowed, we have been, uh, gotten the okay to partner with, um, a nursing home to send greeting cards once a month to the residents so I thank God for that for that partnership uh, that's one of our plan to plant that we are doing and so excited about that that uh, we begin to pray for new ground to sow into and uh, God begin to open up the doors for us and lead us and guide us so so excited about that and I'm praying that uh, he uh, he gives you some areas to sow into. It's good to give rather than it is to receive uh, and plant plant those good seeds of the word of God. That is the best seed that you and I can plant. Words of encouragement. Uh, it's just always a good thing, and and it was really on my heart and on my mind to do, and so we move forward with that so excited about that uh, also uh, if you are interested in taking a look at some of the things from our store you can look at the Facebook page motivations that inspire and if you see something on that particular page like and share that you would like to purchase email us here at the balance of life one at yahoo.com we do have some things that are uh, that we give because they are uh, so uh, things that we sew, like the uh, broken to be created custom paper and things of that nature. Those things we give away. So those are not for sale at all. Those are ministry tools. Listen, I love you without measure simply because I believe in the potential of you. Tomorrow, we're going to come back with another portion of this Lead Me to Faith series. We're going to look at health on tomorrow. Have a blessed day, everyone. I love you. Keep doing what God 
can only do through you.